uh, electronically removing burrs. It like perfectly. <laughs> All right, guys, we are live. Episode 191 of the Shooter's Minds. I thank you guys for tuning in tonight. Co-host in the house, Nikki. What's going on? Hey, y'all. Jennifer Seymour is joining us. What's up, Jen? Hey, everybody. And the top dogs in charge at... That's Tyler and Ethan. What's going on, boys? How's it going? Pretty good. How are you? Doing pretty good. We're going to talk a lot about your products throughout the show here. So stay tuned for that. If you guys are into scope levers, they got what? Magazine extension stuff. They got some some PRS stuff. They got some chassis that yeah, you know, a lot of stuff that has kind of been teased. Media yeah. side of things that we're going to talk about today. So stay tuned for that. Show sponsors the folks over at Tactical Shit. All right, shop dot shop dot tactical shit dot com. Check them out. Their blogs also tactical shit dot com. Much got everything over there. You know what I mean. Body armor, uh, Glock slides. They're doing a lot of, you know, a custom Glock work over there that you can get your slide all done up. Hey, if you want, you can get your your P320, all right, and get some slide work with them too. Maybe some trigger safety drop and you know, drop free stuff. Might need that. Drop safe, not drop free. Drop safe stuff. You can do that. Check out the folks over at Tactical Shit. Also, the folks at Tandem Cross are back sponsoring the show. We appreciate them. Awesome folks. They got their new Hive Grip that they released for the Smith & Wesson Victory Pistol. All right. So it's a $39.99 for this grip. Rubberized grip with the finger grooves on it. And are you missing bread. part of your pistol? Yeah. Well, the upper half is <laughs> at Corson. It's at Corson right now. So, here it is. We're just talking about the grip, man. Looking too far into this, all right? The grip. I'm not a man. I get what you're saying, though. Yeah. Yeah, this is the Hive Grip from Tandem Cross. Check them out, tandemcross.com. We have a discount code from them on this particular product uh, coming on later in the discount corner part of the show. If you got any questions and you're watching on the YouTube side of things, top right-hand corner, you can get them in there. Also, if you prefer to use the Facebook, so the Shooter's Mindset on Facebook, post a comment over there. There's a pinned post to the top that Jen just put up. You can get your questions in for the folks over at MK Machining. What else do I got? Oh, the theshootersmindset.com. If you want to shop around, we got some AR stuff, some pistol stuff. We got blogs over there. Got a discount code, Check out the shooters Jen. Mindset. 10. Or 10. What is it? You don't even know it. Oh, I've had a bad no, week. Man, you, <laughs> is it Gen TSM, Gen TSM 10? Why am I trying to put the 10 first? Anyway, Nikki TSM 10. But mine's one letter less, so it's cooler. There you well, go. I'll in and we'll join the club. Uh, we'll make a code that is TSM 10 on our website as well. And you get 10% off because that seems to be the, the cool amount. Yeah, t see, TSM 10, see, TSM 10 works just about everywhere. It might even work at Target or Publix. <laughs> Yeah. Go to Target, just yell TSM 10 and see if, yeah. TSM 10. All right. Um, so let's jump into it, guys. For those who aren't familiar with you, uh, how did you get into the industry? And if you can tell us a little bit more about your company. Uh, so I'll start a little bit. Uh, I was a competitive shooter um, in another life, kind of. When I was younger, I was involved in small bore. Um, if people know what that is or if they don't, it's uh, accuracy-oriented 22 long rifles. So I did a lot of three-position shooting, uh, which is unsupported. Um, you shoot offhand, and then you shoot sitting, and then you shoot prone. Um, and it's, it's all at 50 yards. It's just extreme precision-oriented stuff. Uh, and then I got into some high power, um, which is a similar thing, but with a, a stock-looking AR-15, and you shoot out to 1,000 yards with open sights. Um, and then that, that kind of got me into long range, and uh, I've done some shotgun stuff, uh, but I love long range rifles, essentially. And yeah, and I was, I was more of the shotgun side when I was younger. Uh, I shot shotgun pretty competitively, uh, all three disciplines, skeet, trap, and sporting plays. Uh, so both of us have been involved in guns for pretty much all of our life. Mm -hmm. uh, grew up, you know, in the country shooting guns. And then, uh, you know, I went to co college for uh, engineering, and he went to college for business, and naturally, we kind of got together one night, and we were like, hey, 
we should make some gun parts and never really thought of it going anywhere. And then next thing we know, we started selling a few parts and then, uh, you know, my one printer that I bought with tax return money turned into two printers and then three and then four and it just kind of kept growing. And then we kind of threw in some mill, uh, some machining work. Uh, I have a background in machining um, and as well as design. So we kind of combine all of our expertise and, and here we are. So I, I would say what, what spurred MKM to start was I had some buddies get into Desert Tech. Uh, if anybody knows what that is, or again, if you don't, uh, they're bullpup bolt actions. And uh, originally when those first came out, shoot, it's probably almost a decade ago now, uh, the triggers were fair. I mean, they're better than other bullpup uh, triggers, but a lot of people didn't see the benefit of reducing the overall length a lot, and they thought the ergonomics wouldn't be there. And after messing uh, with the newer Desert Techs, the, the trigger is very nice on them. And you, there's a lot of unique benefits. You know, it's not a PRS gun. And there's some people using it for PRS. Um, it's a, a precision-oriented long-range gun that's a lot shorter than others. And, uh, you know, people might think that the ergonomics would be poor because the bolt is further back than normal. But it's different more than less ergonomic. It's a, a hair less fast, uh, but it, it's certainly not a pain to work the bolt. And so we can kind of go into that more detail probably when we start talking about our bullpup. Yeah. But anyway, so uh, yeah, I had the idea of why don't we make a bullpup chassis uh, for people's existing rifles rather than a desert tech is, is premium and it's very nice, but it's expensive and it's all proprietary. And so we wanted to kind of make a, a more modular open source bullpup chassis. And that's what we formed the company around and all our printed stuff is kind of came along the way and we've become known for that. And uh, it's, you know, kind of a split personality of a, a premium bullpup chassis. And then you have 3D printed parts. And a lot of people have hesitations about 3D printed parts. And I mean, I love it. It's additive manufacturing. It's the exact opposite of milling. And uh, I don't know, maybe sure. Ethan has right. something else to chime in. Yeah, I mean, I can talk all night about, you know, printing and the advantages of it versus uh, molding parts or machining. Uh, but, you know, right. kind of like gonna, for right now, I'm going to hit on what Tyler said is that, you know, we kind of, we bring both, the best of both worlds to the table. Right on. I mean, when I first heard of you guys, when I, I think I saw the, the throw levers, that was like the first thing, the first product that I kind of see in that kind of, you know, one thing leads to another, you check out the, the throw levers and then you go to the website and you see what else you had at the time. Um, but the thing, and 3D printing has, has been out there. It's definitely catching on a lot more, but fairly new to the firearms world. And, man, I got to tell you, I was one of those people that I'm like, I don't, I don't think it belongs anywhere near firearms, you know, <laughs> at, at first. And obviously I have some of your, I have actually quite a few of your throw levers now and some scope levels and all, all that type of stuff. But I'm like, man, and, 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 you know, I know how the three gunners are and they're, they're tossing their rifles around, you know, it doesn't, you know, it's either on a wood board, it's in a dump barrel, you know, if it catches, is that thing going to hold up? And there's a lot of wells and there's a lot of things out there, but yeah. I don't. And, and so I guess to address that a little bit, um, can you catch a lever on the side of a dump barrel specifically? That's like their biggest nemesis and break it. Yeah, you can. And that's almost by design, I would say. You know, do people break aluminum levers all the time? Yeah, they do. Sure. Yeah. And, you know, if you have a really nice scope, say you're running uh, our Swaro rep, we're going to become a Swaro dealer. He brought this Calls 16i in today. Now, if you catch a lever on uh, the dump barrel, is that going to harm the scope? Probably not for a scope of this caliber. Now, are you running a, a lower end optic and you catch a, a big stout aluminum lever on the dump barrel? Uh, what if that lever doesn't give, you're either going to mess up your magnification ring and the internals there, or we've seen worse damage than that. And and for that reason, a lot of three gunners have switched to our levers um, because we're quick at replacing them. If you have an issue, they're pretty dang tough. You it's know, a mark, I mean, it's a fraction of the cost versus yeah. aluminum. Yeah. So, and, and right. you know, we're continually improving uh, our design. And, and, you know, and I will tell you that, that we have that exact failure in mind uh, for, for a new model that we hopefully will be coming out with in the future, of, you know, to try and mitigate uh, dump barrel fail failures with free gun. Right. So you guys are saying that the 3D printed lever is going to do, it's going to be more forgiving, obviously, 
So it yeah, certainly. So the odds are so, I mean, not messing up the scope. Is that that? What yeah, I yeah. That that's another thing that I had never even considered is that I guess aluminum levers can mark people's scopes. Um, I don't think that would really happen with proper torque, but that that's something we can get into. I mean, I've seen scope tubes crimped because of people just torquing way harder than is needed. And besides a, a dump barrel, in which case, you know, the lever would essentially be designed to, to snap at that point. Really, the only other issues we have with them is people just simply tightening them a lot more than they need to. And, you know, when something's tight, it's tight. And it, it kind of depends on the what you're doing with the part. But the, the levers are, are simply just pretty tough. And I mean, I think the same people that are going to over torque uh, a plastic part are might be the same people, you know, they're going to leave a mark on their scope with an aluminum lever and just uh, over cranking it essentially. Yeah, I mean, I've been I've done I've never broke. Like I never I never shot enough three gun to to dump my and then break, you know, break a, uh, a throw lever off. But I've I've over tightened shit and broke things that way. Because, yeah, because I'm and, just you know of, there, you know that's there's I'm just, just kind of retarded when it comes to that stuff. <laughs> there, there's but some limitations. Tighten it as much as we can go. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah, there it, exactly. And so I mean, this is by no means like any super indicative test, but this is a a colored plastic, and it, it's not as strong as our normal plastic, which is a, a kind of a modified formula. But I mean, you're not gonna you know break it from just looking at it or touching it or a, a normal drop i mean obviously banging it against a piece of aluminum is not a good test but they're they're a lot stronger than people anticipate usually all right jen what what scope what throw levers are you using nowadays night force oh they have their own i didn't even know that excellent okay so that that's a metal one i assume or aluminum one I'm pretty sure it's metal. I'd have to look at it again. I can't remember, but it's pretty yeah. sturdy. I've never broken a throw lever. I just yeah, seem to I've... break triggers and pistols. But uh -huh. Oh, he <laughs> wanted to ask you about that. It's like the connect. Well, we can talk later. The yeah. connector is cool. sliding off the trigger bar. Anyway, He told me about it. He was like, did you see Jen? What do Jen did to break her trigger? I was like, what? Jen broke the trigger? I have no idea. I was shooting and I've... then it wouldn't shoot. Sorry, yeah. off topic. Yeah. We're didn't you break? ADD. But didn't you break something else in that Glock? The, not too long ago. I broke the trigger pin. Squirrel. Oh, okay. <laughs> but now the whole trigger is frozen up. But anyway. All that shit and get yourself a P320. That's what the ball. That's what people <laughs> are doing out there. All right. Everybody <laughs> tells me I need to buy a steel gun, and I told everybody to take up a collection, and I'd be glad to. Yeah. There you go. Um, but Nikki, what? What throw levers are you using? Uh, I'm using a plastic rod fishing thing from Amazon that falls off all the time. Well, <laughs> you would like to try one of ours. We can even provide it to you free of charge. You don't make them for my scope. I already looked on your website. Now, oh. now, 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 now. What scope is it, and do you have calipers? I am running a GPO USA Attac 8. I have never heard of that scope. But <laughs> if, you, if you have calipers, uh, we can essentially almost guarantee you that we have a lever that will yeah, fit. Or better you. yet, if you send us a, your scope, and we do this for everybody, if you send us your scope, you give us two weeks, we can make you a lever free of charge, uh, and that's kind of our payback to you for letting us prototype off your scope. I will see if GPO will send you a scope, but I'm not going to give you mine because I got to yeah. shoot a match in two weeks. So, yeah, yeah. But I can yeah, see but if I get. Uh, I'm not the parts manager here. When my parts manager gets here, I will have him see if he has sizes, and I'll have him reach out to y'all because sure. I don't know. I just yeah, got that wanna... scope finally mounted on my new rifle, so I'm not taking it off. You still have other scopes, though, right? I wonder if you. I do. I have a loophole. I wonder if, yeah. That I also used the big. I took this. I actually or you, left can't the you plastic just thing on there. Plastic thing and just send it to them, and then you can. Yeah, just make it this big. Like, just make it that big. <laughs> just make it as big there as you the go. plastic. There uh -huh. One thing Ethan was, was saying is that we can make custom levers for scopes, and and that we, you know, anybody that sends us a scope that we haven't had before um, for us to prototype with, you know, then they get a free throw lever. That's that's cool. 
Um, now, the reason we do that is because printing lets us, you know, make a vast number of designs and not have to have a fixture or a mold for each one. And so while we can be, printed parts can be like 80% the strength of a molded part. And if you've ever messed with like a Magpul PMAG, that's pretty dang strong. And so we can offer, well, I think we have like 65 models of throw levers as soon as we have a few here on the table next to us finished up and on the side. And that's something that we can do over machining. And, you know, while we totally have the capability to machine these throw levers, uh, you know, you're talking a drastically higher cost and drastically fewer number of models available. And so that's that's kind of what has allowed us to, to spring up such a large library so fast. Somebody just sends in their scope and then, you know, we design up a lever for it and then we have that file forever. Excellent. Uh, what? How many scopes are these uh, throw levers available for currently? Like, you know, just throwing a number out there. It's well over 60 now. Yeah. Um, if I had to guess, it'd be about 65 now. We've got a few scopes, uh, you know, sitting here in, in here in the office that we're, we're finishing up. Uh, this one's a SIG Whiskey, and then we've got a Vortex Golden. Yeah, yeah this is a, this is more of an F-class or bench rest oriented scope, and actually Vortex had called a few weeks ago to see if we made a lever for this scope, and we had not seen one yet, so they sent us one. Um, so it's cool, you know, when you, you're getting a little bit of notoriety from the big companies, uh, you know, Vortex sends a lot of people our way. This is from the calls rep, the local calls rep. It's a calls 16i. Uh, we have a 624i on the way. Yeah, however you want to say it. There's a million different ways that people pronounce it. But, it, you know, it, it's cool that people are getting enough faith in the printed levers to send out scopes to get, you know, OEM parts made for. And that's what we're currently in discussion with Swarovski about. Nice. I mean, what's the, and I have an, uh, the older design or one of your first designs on a Strike Eagle, and then, mm -hmm. and, and then we have a new design here. This is a, throw this up in front of the camera if you can. So definitely a little bit less material, I think, is in this, something like this. Would you want to talk the difference between the two? Yeah. There's you actually, talk about it. Yeah, I'll, 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 hit, I'll hit that. I'll go get a hold letter. All right. Uh, so Tyler's going to go get an old lever real, lever real quick so he can kind of show. But, uh, you know, the old ones, they were a smooth band. Uh, we actually, on the new ones, we thickened up the uh, bands a little bit. So you get a little bit more strength there. So actually, there is a little bit more material. Um, as, and then we also, we changed the insert design. So on our old ones, we did uh, what they call a heat, a heat insert. So actually, we used a soldering iron and actually uh, heated it, melted it into the plastic. And we were seeing like some failures, you know, every once in a while you get a failure with an insert that would just want to pull out. And so we actually went to a, a tapered design and the insert actually gets pulled into a taper from the back side of the lever, which means no matter how, how hard you tighten it, the bolt head will actually go through the other side of the lever before the insert ever pulls out. So yeah. we saw a lot of uh, improvements with, with that new design as far as just those two things. And then we changed up, uh, you know, the looks of it a little bit. Uh, and I think in the future, we're going to kind of go back to maybe a thicker band that's still smooth around the outside for mm -hmm. those people out there that, that really like that smooth aesthetic uh, appeal. So there you can you can see the difference. One is all radiuses. One's, you know, angular. And that's just an aesthetic difference. Um, but you can see uh, the backside here. There's the whole I, I don't know if you can see on the screen, but it's it's, as Ethan said, a host of improvements that increase reliability, repeatability decrease the manufacturing time on them. And uh, uh, I, another benefit of printing, as you can see, is you can print in different colors. Now, these are all a, a type of plastic called PETG, which is uh, somewhat flexible. It's kind of a higher temp, higher strength type of plastic. And then our, our new black is actually a specific formulation of PETG. It's called TECG, and it's from a a U.S. manufacturer of plastics, which is pretty rare. There's not very many of them. Uh, and they're here in Missouri called Tallman 3D. So if anybody likes printing, uh, we highly suggest you, you you know, Google Tallman 3D. They focus on industrial-oriented plastics that are of higher strength and higher grade and higher purity um, than, you know, the stuff you're going to find on Amazon. And we've switched to using exclusively their stuff for, for black parts, and that's the standard stuff we only do. Uh, colored levers kind of at special request and stuff uh, because it's a little bit lower strength and you know we're striving for that that maximum strength and yeah. the in fact we're even testing with new materials now to to possibly switch to for our next rev mm -hmm. awesome and what are these going for and you said if they do happen or what's the warranty on, on these uh, we have a, a lifetime warranty on everything 
And like I said, really the only failures we see are dump barrels. I mean, uh, you see aluminum throw levers fail there and uh, then people just over torquing things. And so that's- Yeah, it goes back to what I was saying a while ago is, you know, you've got this, this bolt head right here and if you just keep tightening it, it's just gonna suck right through the plastic. It, it's not. Right. And what are those going for? Like they're going for like eight and change, is it? No, they're they're nineteen ninety nine. So you're talking about you know. Oh, damn. I was way off. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, you use your ten percent discount code, you get a couple bucks off. It might be down yeah, there. It, just it tell them, dude. Good. Hey, I said eight it, bucks. They might they might help you out. I just you forgot the teen on the end of it, but that's all right. <laughs> yeah, eighteen. Yeah, yeah. TSM ten. Save you some. All right, there you go. All right. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, we talked a little bit. Also, wanted we talked a little bit about the, the bullpup chassis. Now, that's interesting because there's a lot of talk, and you know, there's a lot of bullpup rifles out there. The Tavors, you know, there's a lot of older models, and so you know, the FN makes one. There's a lot of companies out there, but I would never think of a bullpup rifle for like long distance. I mean, is there what are the pros and cons to having this kind of system? Um so hopefully you can see this all in the shot. It's a little bit dark. There you go. That might show you a little bit better. Um, so this is a 20 inch 308, you know, a full size, full length, normal 308 rifle. Um, it has a really good trigger. So uh, your benefits for long range shooting, if it's long range exclusively, uh, you're gonna get a little bit better balance. And I, you know, if you're laying on a hill, that might be the only thing. Now, if you're in a deer stand, you're going to be able to move it around and not have your barrel sticking out. If you're, you know, have it as a truck gun, you can have a 16 inch barrel. It's extremely short. And so your normal fallbacks with a bullpup would be uh, your ergonomics, which was number two on our list, and the trigger, which is number one. And for a precision rifle, you know, a, a good trigger is just, it's top, top dog. It's the most important thing. Um, and so we partnered with Timney. They make a custom version of their Calvin Elite trigger in this. And we'll see if we can get it nice and close on the screen and try and show you how crisp it is. It's set at about six ounces. Okay. Wow. It, I don't know. It, it, does that show up good on the screen? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the trigger comes in at about six ounces as it's set from Timney. Now, here is the safety, which we also relocated. It's an ambidextrous safety. And what's unique about this chassis is it also takes right or left-handed actions. So the cheek piece, we flip it around. Nah. This cheek piece right here can move to the other side, and you can put a left-handed action um, in this chassis. So as far as I know, it's the only chassis that you can do that with. And it's very modular in its design. So we have different length four ends. This is a 20 inch barrel right here, but we have a short four end for shorter barrels like SBR type stuff. Um, we have a buddy, Luke Crawford, his company is Jawbone Media. And he has a chassis right now that he's testing out. And as far as I know, he's gonna put a 12 inch 300 blackout in there with a suppressor. And so he's gonna use our short hand guard for that. And I mean, you're gonna be talking, you know, the length of a gun with a two inch barrel because it's so short with the bullpup chassis. Um, and so that's your biggest advantage. Show, show them the butt pad. The, yeah. So the adjustability down here. So you have dual spring loaded splined levers down here and it's hand adjustable. So you loosen it up and then you can adjust your length of pull and your can't. can't. And then you can also adjust the recoil pad height. So, you know, it, I'm a kind of a recreational long range shooter. As I said, I used to shoot small bore high power and that got me into the long range world and adjustability of your system is really important. You know, it needs to be comfortable for you. And so, like I said, ergonomics was second on the list for us behind the trigger pull. So we've worked really hard to, to give you all the adjustability you need. The cheek piece is adjustable fore and aft. Uh, you have a 20 minute scope rail on here and you have plenty of, of scope rail section to mount your optic, you know, for proper eye relief. And it's just, it's a, it's a good system. It takes AI mags, it's reliable. And the trigger is just, it's killer. You know, you kind of got to feel it to, I believe it. Desert Tech has a good trigger, um, and I think this one's crisper, and it, it can certainly go lighter. Uh, a light trigger is not for everybody, but you can go down to about three ounces with this setup, and you can go up to not quite two pounds. Awesome. I mean, and I know what, that's Kelly, Kelly Samsel shooting a Tavor rifle and three guns, so she's very kind of, you know, you don't see that 
very in, in the game of three gun people rocking uh, bull pups. So yeah. now, why do you there, think, there's why do you think that what? is? Um, I don't know. We what was reliability. That? <laughs> was it reliability? And there was also another thing uh, when you shoot prone, right? Now. Especially, like, you can't put, like, a 40-round... Let's say if you needed a 40-round PMAG for that stage. Mm -hmm. Like, a 40-round PMAG in a bullpup, and you're going to need to go prone? How the hell are you going to do that in a bullpup? Yeah, yeah, that, kind of yeah that's, a, that's a good thing. And so, it, with our chassis, you know, it's bolt-action precision-oriented. And if you're laying prone, it's actually somewhat of an advantage. Because, you know, you're going to have your left hand back here working your bag... Um, and then your magazine is right in front of that. So normally, you know, with a, a standard rifle, you're going to have your left hand back here. But if you want to do a mag change, you got to reach way up here, you know, in front of your face. And with ours, the action is right there, obviously. So it's a, a very small benefit, not usually worth mentioning, but since you were talking about prone. There you go. All right. So there's definitely, and obviously different games, totally different games. So yes, chassis. Sense in, in a long range game than it would in an action three gun game. But, you know, she seems to be doing pretty well with it. So I, I want to, I want it to bore, you know, I want a bullpup rifle just to have one. Right? You want one of everything. Exactly. I want a one PCC, of everything. A PCC, a 22 tan. I've never even shot any bullpup system before. I don't know. I've seen them. But it's don't not like one of those things like, oh, 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 let me, let me shoot it. You know, it kind of, I never, it didn't get me that reaction but you know it is what it is i still want one though so tavor i don't know whatever if you're watching oh uh, whatever <laughs> so there we go and are these bullpup chassis available right now because i know they were in the prototype phase and they were yeah. being teased for a while so yeah we have we've made our first production batch they've been done for a few months now uh we don't have anything up on the site they are available um the reason we don't have anything up on the site is we don't have a whole bunch available um, and we don't want, I guess, to get backordered on on something like this, that it's an extensive production period when we do another production batch. It's going to be larger. Um, but we do have some available, and people are going to ask the price. Um, they're 2000 even for the ones we have right now. And, you know, in person, people can see the quality of the machining. They can see the amount of components and work that goes into it. Sometimes on social media, people are like, 2000 for a chassis? That's crazy. I can you know, spend $500 for you know, an MDT or something. And that's true. Um, but you know, Ethan designed all this. And you're talking over 50 pieces made from billet with all the linkage components you know, versus two or three um, for a standard chassis. So it's, it's much more than a normal chassis. You have a custom Timney Calvin Elite, which that doesn't come cheap even for us. You have a linkage design. There's multiple metals used in the, the manufacture of it to, to provide you the, the utmost in trigger pull is the number one thing. But yeah, which, which that required, you know, precision gr grinding uh, for the for the trigger components and then uh, also some bushings that are precision reamed uh, just yeah. just so you get that good trigger feel. Uh, well, people, we had Master P, we had a couple long range, you know, and chassis guys on here and. Dude, I, and like I said, I'm not in that game, but when you look at the craftsmanship that goes into some of these higher end chassis, I mean, you could totally justify that price. You know, you like the two thousand dollars. People see your stuff and they're like, "Man, well, it's." I can see why it's. You know, I pay this because and, of what goes into. And that's it. the thing. I mean, it. Besides us both being bullpups, we're not a Desert Tech competitor, and they're they're a standalone proprietary system. But just for example, the, the chassis alone for Desert Tech starts at 3700 So, I mean, it, it get, just gives you a reference that bullpups aren't cheap. And you look at a Tavor, those aren't cheap either. And a trigger no. is definitely not a strong suit. No. Yeah, they're, they're to, and, you know, if you're serious about a game, you know, you're going you're gonna to cough up the dough somehow, whether you can afford it or not. Are right, we going to get into <laughs> discount court? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, like me. I, I find it. I, I was find about to say, I'll like you, dough, you selling a kidney to. Uh... Yeah, <laughs> fucking payment plans and credit cards. You know, so here's here's the thing with the infinity, right? Like the infinity pistols is, and I've heard this more than once. You know, you got to wait a year to get a custom built infinity, right? So they're like, when you get when you get those mail for the credit card things, you know, they mail you, hey, get our credit card. You get it, 
you you you, you put it you know an infinity pistol on that credit card and then you're not going to get it from a year from now right so you pay it off and at a year you're going to have your pistol and you paid off the card that's how you do it okay, now you I have Heath to said that last time he was on the show <laughs> yeah i heard it from Heath, and i had heard some dude said it in the gun shop too he's like dude you just pay it off that way but then me i see like a new pistol come out like a 320 and I, and I buy it with that credit card too. So it's like shit. So whatever. it's not for everybody. <laughs> Good game plan. So, Good game plan. There you go. Like the 320 right now. All right. Uh, Havoc Legion shooting team says he's checking in. What's up, dude? Uh, we got Lewis says hi, guys. And that's all we got. So if you got any Q&A stuff, plug it in here. I saw your post we'll about selling us P320. No, I'm not selling us. This is the X5. They're supposedly safe. Whatever. I bet the most I... used word or letter or grouping of letters and numbers this week on the internet is P320. So P320. sick of hearing about it. Everything is P320. Yeah. Uh, but discount corner stuff. So we talked a little bit about some, some coughing up some dough. We're going to try to save you some here. Uh, Jen, what do you got? You can get Tim Profit Carbon Arms for great shotgun shell caddies or chest rigs. And they actually have a special going on for the chest rigs right now. Um, but you can get those at carbonarms.us and use TSM10. Mm -hmm. And then you can get 10% off of the Shooter's Mindset store with Gen TSM10. There you go. Nikki, what do you have? Um, go to americandefensemanufacturing.com. Use, use discount code 3GUN10. It's the number three, the word gun, and the number 10. will save you 10% on all items that are not serialized. Uh, Hit me up with my friend's discount code. It's got to be my friend to get them or just message me on Facebook. They don't really got to be friends. But um, save you 15% at Criterion Barrels and 20% at True Spec. Uh, also check out Red Hill Tactical for your Kydex holster needs. And uh, use discount code Clevenger. And I think it saves 10%. I'm not exactly sure how much that one saves. But it's going to save you some money. So just type in Clevenger. And also if you go to the... TSM shop, you can use discount code Nikki TSM10 and save 10%. So, and oh, IKI, I the, the letters are closer on the keyboard than Jen. You yeah, but mine's only hand. three letters. <laughs> yeah, that's true. All right, next and I'm other. worth reaching across the keyboard for, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, All right this, yeah. yeah, Jen has the most used codes, by the way, Nikki. Boo. Uh, but then I, I've handed those out to people like, hey, they want something. I'll be like, hey, just use Gen TSM 10. So maybe okay, that's I see your favorite is. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. I'll, I've I'll been try here that. longer. Tenure. <laughs> Tenure. Yeah. Seniority. Yeah. So folks over I don't want to call it shit. seniority. That makes me sound old. <laughs> yeah, it does. Well, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, folks over at Tactical Shit, shop.tacticalshit.com, TSM10, save you 10% off anything over there on their website. I got a new one here from Tandem Cross, TSM Show. That's TSM Show, all caps, gets you free shipping on Boom, the hive grips for the Smith & Wesson Victory. So if you're looking for those, free shipping, TSM Show. Uh, Red Hill Tactical, save TSM10, 10% off. All right. If you want any scope levers from... MKM, TSM 10, yeah. right? That's right. But don't do yeah, it right but, um, now because I still have to make it active. But give me like an hour. <laughs> yeah. Look, people are online right now. They're going to be emailing Anthony like, dude, your code won't work. <laughs> it didn't work, man. It didn't work. Well, shit. Email them, right? Um, but no, uh, what else we got? Uh, TerrantTacticalInnovations.com, TSM 10, save you 10% off uh, site-wide on that. Uh, DeweyRods.com, TSM15, says you 15% off a fine rod, not uncoated rod over at Dewey Rods. And what are we what are we at? Oh, Rand CLP, Mindset16, says you 15% off RandCLP.com. That's all I got. And uh, Tyler, what do you have? We just have the TSM10 right on your website, all right? Anything else that you know? Yep, that's right. Um, tell you, during big holidays, if people watch our Facebook page, we usually run, you know, some type of steel sale or aluminum sale or throw lever sale. Um, so I'm mad I missed can, that 4th of July sale because that looked awesome. Yeah, well, it was, and it was pretty awesome. <laughs> it, yeah, it was pretty awesome. So we can, we can get more into targets here in a second, but uh, that's something that, you know, I think we have a few unique advantages um, over some competitors in. 
There we go. And these discount codes are going to be in the description box on the YouTube side of things. So if you're watching on the YouTube side or you're watching later on when, you know, the, the show's uploaded, you can just click in that description box right below the video and you can get all these discount codes there if you uh, if it's more convenient for you. Um, but moving on, you guys do a lot more stuff than just chassis and uh, throw levers. You're also doing the steel target thing. I mean, this is a – it's like everybody's doing steel targets, right? But yeah. what sets you guys apart, though? What sets you guys apart from the competition, right? You guys – what are you guys doing? So first thing, the biggest thing is we water jet all of our targets. We don't flame cut. We don't laser. <clears throat> we don't do anything with heat. So the, the biggest difference is – uh, you'll hear a lot of people say, well, flame cut targets, they like to chip along the edges. Well, the science behind that is really because uh, AR-500 is uh, quenched and tempered at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So anytime you raise the temperature of the steel above that, above that 400 degrees Fahrenheit, well, you're affecting the state of it. So actually what happens is, is you actually uh, take and affect the, the edge of this target wherever you cut it, if you flame cut it or laser, uh, for a certain delta T from that edge. Uh, you affect that whole zone per se, and so if you hit a, you know, if it takes a large impact, it can take an, and chip off a piece of that target. And so, you know, we we do water jetting for all of our targets, so you get a superior target versus a uh, flame cut. You can hit you can hit the edges on these, and they won't chip. And you can see it lets us do cool stuff like this is a gridded target. So uh, as I as I stated before, I'm kind of a recreational long range type of guy. And so if I'm sitting up on a hill shooting at 800 yards, well, maybe I want to shoot four or five shots and, and measure my group. And, you know, these gridded targets spawn directly from me and my buddies shooting and saying, I wonder how big our group was. Well, we didn't bring a tape measure. Uh, so you have uh, an etched grid on there that's water jetted in. So it's not any weaker. It's not going to ding. It's not going to dent up. And, you know, when you're repainting your target, you can just estimate your group size. So that's an option. We obviously have them ungridded and unetched, but we have... Uh, other cool possibilities that you can do that you couldn't do with laser or plasma. For example, we have anatomically correct deer and elk vitals. So you have like the heart labeled, you have the lungs labeled, and oh, we have coyote targets, we have hog targets with vital zones etched in. Yeah, and that's, they're etched in. Yeah, it's just, you know, that's not possible with laser or plasma. Uh, and while you could etch it in, you know, when you hit that, it would ding because it would be softer. And they call that the heat affected zone. And there's, there's differing. I guess qualities of that there's like water submerged cutting uh which is better but you're still cutting with heat no matter what you're uh, wondering about the you know the etching on the target you know wondering if uh bullets impacting that would cause it to uh you know wear out uh i urge you to go on our facebook page we have a photo of when we took one of these exact targets to a mammoth um and i don't know how many rounds did it get shit? like I, thousand yeah rounds it was getting hit so this was the mammoth sniper challenge um very early january this year but it was set up at like 250 yards and it was a gridded target we wanted to show people what it could withstand and i mean this thing was seriously getting pounded probably every 10 seconds all day it was at their zero range the day before the big match started and i mean it was getting hit all day and so what it was mounted to was one of our t-post mounts which you can see here and it's super simple, but well-made, very stout. It holds your target spring-loaded, if you can see that right there. And then you have a lock nut back here. Um, so when the target gets hit, here, hit it with something. It, it rings out pretty good. And so those are super simple. You know, they bolt right onto a T-post. And rather than just capping the T-post, you know, where you put it on top, uh, these have two grade 8 bolts, so you could draw them through the T-post if you wanted. Uh, but you can have multiple mounts on, on one T-post. So it's highly economical. They're really audible if you're in the long range like us. Um, and it, it's a good, effective option. It holds your target about a 15-degree angle. Even if you're not in the long range. I mean, uh, yeah. we have, there's a guy that works for us. Uh, you know, he's starting to get into three gun. And, and he, he uses these same mounts and targets uh, to kind of shoot at, uh, you know, for those longer range three guns. Yeah, I, I know particularly out west a lot of guys like them because there's so much public land out there. But people don't want to leave, you know, their targets out there. So they'll drive some T-posts, and then it's really easy with a three-quarter inch wrench to take these mounts off. You leave your target on it, and it's easy transport and stuff. And they're economical. They're not expensive. Um, so I guess, you know, where do we excel over others in targets? AR-500 is AR-500, um, but the way you cut it matters. And then, you know, target mounting solutions, I think, are important as well. Yeah, and we're going to... 
we're we're working on coming up with a good you know a good test video ourselves of uh, you know kind of some of the differences that you'll see in the field between uh, flame cut and water uh, water jet cut targets. Interesting. So pretty, I mean, that says a lot because your target, I mean, steel targets aren't cheap. You know, they you know people, especially some of these local ranges, and who put on a lot of matches and every weekend, you know, these targets are getting shot up. Um, you want your stuff to last because you know clubs don't have a lot of money to begin with. So um, if these are going to last longer, it just kind of makes sense, right? Yeah. And they're gonna yeah. they're gonna stay and they're gonna stay like kind of longer the way they came, right? So you're gonna have that yeah. grid. You can have some stuff engraved in it, all that type of stuff. Yep. All and, the ones I've seen, you see they're pretty beat up. Yeah. So speaking of the engraving. Uh, well, we can do custom options as well. You know, I, I have a graphic design, a little bit of that background. And so, it, for example, we're both University of Missouri alums, and their ag department was having an auction. It was for a fundraiser. And so we etched the Mizzou logo on there, NRL. which is pretty. Yeah, we, yeah, we've done some targets for NRL, the National Rifle League. And so, you know, that's just something that's not really feasible to do any other way. I guess you could machine it with coolant on there, but that's like really Yeah, you not could. You'd have to get like some diamond coated tools. Yeah. Uh, not very, and it wouldn't be very economical because you can run a lot faster with the etching on the water jet. Right on. I'd, I'd be interested in seeing that comparison video. That yeah. Video well, about yep, and uh, we'll certainly get that up there. That's like one of our number one priorities. Yeah, For example, if you go to our Facebook page, you'll have to scroll back a little ways, um, but there's a picture. of It's a gridded target that's hung up, and you can just see that it's been shot the hell out of. And uh, you can see, if you zoom in, right where bullets hit on the edge of the cut surface. So see, imagine the target's here, but the firing line 300 yards away was a few hundred yards long. And so people can shoot at it from some pretty extreme angles, and, you know, bullets were literally bouncing off the cut surface. We actually had somebody buy that target off of us on the spot because they couldn't believe that it was still in one piece. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, if that says anything, but certainly a, a, a video in person will Yeah, and, and it's not just going to be a video. Um, I want to back it up with some, you know, a good, some good data behind it. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm an engineer, so I've got a very scientific, you know, kind of mindset. So I, I want, you know, some good data behind it and actually, a, you know, a good process of testing, not just, hey, we shot some rounds at a target and here's what we found. So. Yeah. Excellent. Makes, sense. Makes a lot of sense. Like the, no, I was going to go through the P320 thing, scientific stuff. Ugh. <laughs> drop it, Anthony. Literally. Enough already. I thought you said the adult what? thing to do was to drop it. What? Oh, uh, no, that was somebody else. No, somebody no, else. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm going to do that. Drop it. Just drop don't, it. No. I mean, she's pretty clear, but she's clear right now, but I don't I still not dropping my guns on purpose. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not I don't want to find out the hard way either. Um but yeah, we'll we'll drop we we'll Quit uh, it. that's it, we're done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just move on. Moving on. Next yeah, move next on. topic. Yeah, yeah, next thing. Next so about thing. those All turning. right, but but oh no, also about those magwells. So a lot of guns from the factory like this, right? Comes with a magwell on it. You guys have a new magwell design that you are teasing out there. I'm, you, we saw it in the pre-show here. I'm kind of digging it. And now there's, you guys had a metal one that I think I saw on Instagram. And I think you guys are playing around with a couple of different materials, right? Yeah, so uh, we had a, a very notable competitive pistol shooter. Uh, her name is Vera Koo. And we have a, a gunsmith that's kind of the local gunsmith. And she came to him and said, you know, I don't like this $160 magwell. Could you machine me some more ones? Um, and so he said, well, I think we have somebody that could do something better than machining them for you. And so within a matter of hours, we were able to print what you just saw, the first prototype. And so the biggest difference, I guess, that I could show you, if I can get it to, to focus there, you can see that smooth bevel right there, that smooth angle. And so on a $160 one, they came in with two different ball end mills, and there was a, a huge ridge in there. It just wasn't smooth. And so for a fraction of the cost, we can print them. They're nice and strong, you know, beaten against a piece of metal there. Again, that's not going to show you everything about strength, but they're, they're extremely stiff and durable. And so this is for a 1911. Um, specifically, it was a Caspian was what we yeah. tested on. I'm not the most well-versed in pistols, so I don't know if all 1911s have a threaded back strap. That's where it bolts on. 
Um, so first, 1911s. Beyond that, we just need pistols for prototyping. Ethan came up with th this design in just a few hours, and it's it's a matter of having things in hand for us to come up with other designs. But I could see this being something like a throw lever, where we have a a beveled magwell for you know essentially all common competition pistols, and at that same, it's just a, it's just a more economical option, really. Yeah, yeah. and it does this. I mean, it serves the same purpose. Yeah. Now that now that you said her name twice. I actually know who the shooter is, and she is a very uh, – she's a Bianchi Cup shooter. So yeah. she yeah. – yeah, she shoots the – you know, I, I haven't played that game, but that is pretty much – when it comes to accuracy with a pistol, that that's pretty much – that's the game. I mean, you're mm -hmm. talking about custom pistols too that are tons of money with optics yeah, on them, was, and, you know what I mean? Very it was yeah. So her pistol, it was it was neat. You know, it was a twelve thousand dollar pistol, and she came in and she's used to extensively machined components, and she was very pleased with the quality of the uh, of our prints. I mean, I don't think you can see the the level of ice in terms of resolution, but it's I mean, it's just a really clean print essentially. And had you not known it was printed, you would probably assume it was molded. Um, but it serves the same purpose, and I mean, literally a fraction of the cost. And it was. It was cool to have somebody of her notoriety um, be pleased with the, the appearance yeah. of it, the strength of it, the durability of it. I mean, we were chucking them at the ground as hard as we could to see if we could, you know, break one, and we couldn't. Right. Yeah, those – you have to wait on those or, or general general weight on them? I, I mean, I could go put it on our postage scale, but I would guess maybe two ounces. They're pretty light. And so this – this it's hard to describe, but it's about 30% – solid on the inside so you have like solid exterior layers and then you have solid bottom and top layers and then you can vary the amount of material inside so you could make it you know over twice the weight if you wanted and that's something you could adjust right yeah that game so those magwells in that game and that's why when i saw that first it totally makes sense for that when they go prone you need that magwell to be you know flat when you're going prone so you can't have yeah. like some of these action magwells are a little bit different because it's a totally different game. But you see the big top dogs that are running those guns, they all have those flat saw magwells for that. Yeah, she she said specifically when they lay prone, you know, they rest on that. And she said their X ring is one inch at 25 yards and uh, two inches for the 10 ring at 25 yeah. yards, I believe. Which is insane for a pistol, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't even want to think about those guns because I'm just – can't afford it, even on a payment plan. <laughs> There's a reason that they made rifles. Yeah, I'm not getting. A, I'm not doing the. I'm not doing the credit card thing with that one. I'm just saying. <laughs> the limit don't go that high. So, but awesome. That's a, it's an awesome game, and you could get away with you know cheaper guns than that to get into it. But when you're at her level, it just that's what that's usually what those pistols are going for. Uh, what else do we have? Any up, any upcoming stuff, man? Any upcoming projects, goals, uh, products yeah. that you want to kind of? So, um, yeah, Ethan can talk about some upcoming uh, projects that he's been working on, and then I'll chime in a little bit and see if he forgets uh, anything. So, you guys, some of you guys might know about our twenty-five round trays. Uh, they're aluminum, sixty-sixty-one billet. Uh, what are they? But reloading. They're, they're reloading trays. Uh, but now we're uh, getting ready to have uh, 50 round reloading trays available. Uh, these are actually a little bit cleaner. Um, we're going to have a batch of black for right now. Um, our standard standard anodizing will be clear though. Uh, but but these are black, so that that's kind of one thing that we're working on that's new. What what advantages do they have over a normal reloading tray? All right, yeah, good point. So one advantage is is uh, they're stackable. So you can see these there's counter boards right here. Uh, so if I bought two of these trays, I can actually stack them up as high as you wanted to go uh, when they're empty. So, you know, if you want to clear some bench space, you could do that. Yeah. Uh, one thing is, is, I don't know, you know, how much you guys reload, but uh, if you dump some powder down in the in the holes in a traditional reloading tray, it gets stuck and then your shell can be like kind of wonky and, and wobbly. Uh, these, if you get some powder down inside, you know, this, this thing's, it's literally two trays. So, you know, you just tilt it a little bit and all your powder goes away. Yeah. And so that also allows you to interchange the top plates. So we'll have packages available, but um, I believe this is a 338 Lapua loading tray, but you could put a 223 top on it 
Or with the 50 rounders, you could put two different 25 round tops. And if you see there's some holes in the middle there, it's kind of hard to see. Yeah, we yeah see there it. you go. Nice. But so we got 25 and 50 rounders that are about to be released. And then down the road, hopefully some 100 rounders. So say you reload four different size cartridges, you could have four 25 round slots for each. It's, just, it's a modular system that um, I would say offers the, the aesthetic appeal of a, a nice billet tray, but then it offers that modularity at about the same price. Yeah, you're, you're getting Excellent. into more modularity where, you know, traditional ones, you'd have to buy four different trays where ours you could buy four different tops in one bottle if you wanted yeah when and i first saw those on what well, go ahead oh i was gonna say they they also are laser engraved so you have our logo here and then uh what size they are is is engraved in the tops yeah when i first saw those i was like there's some out there for uh for uh pistol pistol caliber reloading so and they're case gauging the round also so yeah like, man, that, you know that's, was... that's something we've we've been suggested to make and it really wouldn't be hard you could run that in what one op and yeah. flip it over and deck it off um yeah. so it'd be much more simple than this and we could certainly make that you know if the demand was high enough if somebody's watching this and, and reloads pistol and they want to make sure their rounds are good uh you know give us a message on facebook or a call and the more make... yeah the more suggestions we have for an idea the more likely we are to machine it yeah, cause you know, man, I've I've been at a major match, and then I get my gun locked up, and you know, when you get that round, if you had it before, pretty much have to grab. And I didn't even know how to clear it at that time in that particular match. You have to take the gun and push the frame like that to even clear that, cause it pretty much locks up the gun if you get a round that's not case gauge right, and that's mm -hmm. pretty much it. Can be it's a stage killer, so you do not want yeah. that. And you know, there's, there's a lot of them out. Yeah, a lot of people would just take their 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 barrel to their pistol and they'll just drop the rounds in. That's a slower way of doing it. It's that's a you know, hell do it if that's what you got. But uh, something like that where you can take a hundred rounds or fifty rounds or something like that and just do it all in one shot and then just flip it over and dump them into a ziploc bag or wherever you're storing your ammo, your ammo can, whatever you know that ammo is good to go. That makes sense. Yeah. So other stuff um, that we've been working on uh, here is a Magpul PMAG AICS. Um, this is a short action. And you can see we have an extension down on the bottom of here. It's a plus two extension for like 308, 65 Creedmoor. Um, we're going to have a plus three coming out soon. Um, we have about every Magpul magazine. This is the long action Magnum AICS, but we have the normal um, long action. We have their Glock mags. We yeah, have those their, aren't available yet. Those yeah, are yeah. We have their AR P mags. Um, so right now we have the the short action AICS P mag that was the most requested, but it's going to be another thing where we have a lot of models of. Uh, if anybody is into reloading and specifically precision stuff, they might know what this is. It's a Magneto Speed chronograph. Mm -hmm. And uh, my Ryan biggest complaint. Hey, um, Ryan Hay. Yeah, from from using these through the years, uh, they work super good. And as they've gone through the, the new revisions, the new versions, they continually work better. But they have the same barrel mounting system, and you need three hands to, to work it. So unless you're from real deep Arkansas and maybe you have an extra arm or something, you can't really tighten it by yourself. Um, so we plan on making a better mounting system for that. I have absolutely no idea what that is. It's um, okay. you, you it's a chronograph you put on the end of the barrel, and it does yeah. muzzle speed. Exactly. So your barrel would essentially end right here, and the bullet literally goes right over here. And as far as I understand it, there's two things that can sense uh, a magnetic surface going over it, and right. you know it, it determines how long it took to go over each sensor, and then you get your speed. Yep. That's how I got my dope, was with one of those. I yeah. just have and one of those ones you put and then you shoot through. It's like a little yeah. thing. Yeah, well, yeah, what's – and, you know, obviously I'm not super knowledgeable. But why, why have one of those, and maybe this is a question for the guys at Magneto, over just shooting through a traditional – the one that Nikki's talking um, about, you know, like a chronograph? Because I've seen a lot of people shoot 
a chronograph. It's easy to do. You know, you literally have to shoot a bullet over the sensor. Um, the magneto speed has been more accurate at the price point than I've seen from other chronographs. I'm a precision long range guy and I've messed with a lot of chronographs and you, you have some really nice ones. Um, and you have some cheaper ones and those cheaper ones, uh, you could have two of the $99 ones and I guarantee you, they're probably not going to read, you know, the exact same. And when you're shooting past a thousand yards, you really need to have your dope exact. And these magneto speeds, uh, I've messed with quite a few. All my buddies have them, and they, they work great. And they're more sensitive um, a lot of times. You well, know, they're really they're real portable too. I mean, it comes yeah. in like a little case, and you can carry it really easy. And then, like, if you get to the range, and everybody, if it's not a private range, and like when I went, I went out to Fort Gordon, which is the military range. So they only go cold every thirty minutes. So we got there; they had just gone cold. Well. We didn't have to wait for it to go cold to go walk out there and put the chronograph and hope some idiot didn't shoot it. We just put that on the end of the muzzle. You could do it in the lane. And yeah, and now there's another chronograph that you've probably heard of called the Lab Radar. And uh, obviously from the, the name, it uses radar to detect your bullet. And those have some advantages. Some people have difficulty using them. A big advantage of that kind is you can track the bullet downrange uh, at least 100 yards. And so you can determine some ballistic coefficient information from that. Whereas, you know, another way to do that would you'd have to be like multiple calibrated standard chronographs and try and shoot through one at, you know, your muzzle 100 yards, 200 yards, 300 yards and not break one. And uh, it's just not great. Yeah. There it is. That's why it makes sense. You heard it. There you go. They're really cool. I want one, but it's on the list. The long. What are those? List. Th they're not cheap, right? What are those things going for? It depends. Any they idea? have a few different uh, setups. Um, I believe the V2 is under three hundred dollars, and the you oh, know the top of the line with different mounts is under four hundred. Yeah, that's not that's not bad. I mean, you're talking about that that ninety nine dollar crony crony that usually everybody has that everybody usually shoots up. And then you know some of the better ones are in that price range of two three hundred dollars anyway. So that's even, even higher. Yeah. So that makes sense. I thought they were a little bit more than that. So there you go. That's not bad. Eventually, maybe if, if I you want to have them on the show, I can get them on the show. Yeah, I think we should do that because for some reason now I'm curious about it. So <laughs> yeah, they're good. cool guys. Uh, they uh, they sent them direct from Magneto Speed when we told them we were making a new mount for it. So they seemed. All about it, eager to, to get something that'll make people happy. Yeah, cool. let's get let's get in contact with Ryan Hay. But yeah, I mean, what do we got live? Anything live on on your end? Ken? I'll look again, but no, I just look. Nobody there. likes to talk to Jen on the on the Facebook. I side know. Just I'm so sad. Me. Nobody talks to me anymore on Facebook. <laughs> Maybe we should have Nikki do it. See if she gets more uh, questions coming. Uh, up. No, that's all that. Read between the lines, Anthony. Read between the lines. Let's say that's. Uh, <laughs> On about that responsibility life. No, nah, yeah, Nikki's like Nikki doesn't even know how to do it. I think I had to try. I, I know, know I've, to I've never honest. done it. She's like, I've how? never done it. What? You want me to do what? You know, like yeah, refresh yeah. the screen and see if anybody put no. Nope, yes, I forgot the refresh part of it. I kept going. <laughs> nope, got nothing. No, <laughs> no got there's nothing, nothing there. Yeah. All right, here I think we're gonna run it down to shout outs, um, unless Ryan or I mean, unless we have anything else we want to throw in there. Tyler. Who is Ryan? He's got Ryan Hay on the brain now. You know <laughs> you remember names. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I hope yeah, you I'll do better to... remembering Nancy's name than you do remembering all of our names. Yeah, see what happens. One, one small thing we forgot to say, we're about to become a Swirl dealer, a Vortex dealer. So, you know, in addition to the throw lovers, we're going to be able to do some sweet package deals um, where you get that stuff included with the scope. Um, yeah, here's our, our new aluminum scope level. It's real nice. Um, people are going to say, what's the advantage of it over a standard level? Um, if you compare it to the, the Chinese Vortex one, uh, those have a bolt on each side, whereas this has a hinge. So it's easier to set up. It's also lower profile. Um, you can see how thin the lower band portion is. So you can put it on almost every scope without taking it off your rifle, which, you know, it sucks if you sighted it. Yeah, and then show the sunlight from the top. Yeah, it's got an open top design so it gathers a lot of light i mean you can see it's pretty lit up right now um and then that pen, pen, i might need to get one of yeah so, I need, i've been you know, saying i need a level for my scope out for my precision rifle and i don't have one yeah it's particularly important you know past like 500 yards or so um 
just because if your crosshairs are at a one degree angle, well, when you're dialing elevation, you're going to be introducing a one degree angle. And I'm shooting the gap actually. grind, and the gap grind goes out to 1,200. Hey, yeah. yeah, I filmed that. If you search gap grind on YouTube, I used to work for GA Precision as an undergrad, and you'll see some of my video work on there. Sweet. Thanks. Yeah, I need to get yeah. a level before that. I put one of those levels on, on, and I was like, dude, every time I had the rifle crooked. it. Now look at yeah, it. it'll uh, it'll fix that real fast. Yeah. So, uh, and and they're affordable. You know, it's not. You know, everybody should have one. It's just, just need it. Yeah. Yeah. Here's like a printed one. These are twenty bucks, just like a level or a lever. And then there's an aluminum one. Those are probably going to be fifty-five, but similar designs. Um, but if you look up other hinged aluminum levels, uh, you're not going to find them for fifty-five. There it is. Done and done. I think we're doing a uh, going shout outs here. Jen, start us off. All right. Lansing Tactical for if you want to get into the long range game, you, they've got great uh, guns coming out with a 6.5 right now. So keep watching for that. Ooh. ZT Knives for their awesome blades. Night Force Optics, load up ammunition. Sharpshooters of Augusta and Shooters of Augusta. Grizzly Targets, Lucas Oil Outdoor Line. Um, proper Carbon Arms and Samsung Manufacturing. Oh, that was quick. Uh, Nikki, that was have? quick. Dang, I don't know if I can beat that. She's getting good at that. Getting good right. at I can't be as long-winded as Anthony. He takes forever. <laughs> That's why I'm um, last. Yes, that is why you're last. Uh, go ahead and shout out Criterion Barrels, American Defense Manufacturing, Eagle Imports, Pure Gold Shotgun Chokes, the official shotgun choke of Three Gun Nation, True Spec. I'm forgetting somebody. Oh. Stage Zero Shooting Supply, The Outdoor Shop, Shop Local. If you don't have a local gun shop, you can check mine out at theoutdoorshop.rocks. Uh, Safari Land, Red Hill Tactical, ZT Knives, GPO USA, and some companies that don't sponsor me but I really like, Tough Products, Techware USA, and Dangerous But Good. Man, Tyler, what do you got? Ethan, shout outs. Shout outs, uh, we like Swarovski. Swarovski. Yeah, they're uh, letting us put this 1.6i on our three gun rig. Uh, Vortex for sending yeah. us scope. Vortex send us scopes, they send us people, you know, our that's way. A, that's, a, that's the Viper Gen 2? No, that's a Golden Eagle. No, uh, it's a 15 to 60 power. And we do have a Viper Gen 2, though. No, that's a Razor Gen 2. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Razor also, Razor. yeah, hey, show them that. So this is a, a long-range oriented chassis. And another shout-out to Vortex for sending us this Razor Gen 2 to put on top. So we're going to be doing some demo videos of the chassis. Um, it's really something you got to feel in person to see the quality. But you can see a, a good trigger on video. And, you know, you can see hits past 1,000 and see results. Magneto Speed for sending us those chronos. Yep, they sent us several. And they also sent us a night vision scope to play with and make a lever for um, so I guess that's our shout outs. Remember, we have TSM10 at mkmachine.com, but in 30 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> SM10, I like that. Yeah. Um, what do we, uh, I'm just going to, quick announcement here, and I'm not super sure 100%, but I think the Shooter's Mindset show is going to be moving days. I think it's no longer going to be Wednesday nights. I'm leaning towards Tuesday nights now. Or Thursday nights. So, uh, stay stay tuned for the social media stuff uh, on our social media for maybe the day change. Yeah, some people might be pissed off. Some people might not care. And some people, maybe more people will watch because they're free from work or something. I don't know. But shit might be change is coming. So just say be aware of that. Um, subscribe to the channel. Right below the video, you're gonna see the subscribe button. So I believe it should be a yellow button. Hit that every Wednesday. Well, it's, I don't know. It's every Wednesday now. It might be Tuesday. Uh, we're going to have a new episode of The Shooter's Mindset featuring another great shooter or a great company out there. Uh, the folks over at Tactical Shit for supporting the show, we really appreciate it. Tandem Cross for supporting the show. Man, they got everything for Rimfire. Uh, so check them out if you're looking for parts and upgrades. Uh, you guys want to see the printer real quick? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Sure. Here, we'll take it in here. So a lot of people want to see these things. Um, there's a lot of different grades of printers. You got from hobby to industrial type stuff. We tend towards the industrial side more, but 
here is uh, our Fusion 3, which just printed a 13 round 12 gauge extension. If you can see that, that's a, a quite large part to print. And here we have a small fleet of Maker Gears, and they're printing our throw levers. Sorry, it's really awkward with this laptop. But you can see uh, those bad boys going to town. They run about 23 hours a day. Nice. You got some CNC. Oh, yeah. Show some CNCs if you. Huh? Uh, so our big CNC is in a shop across town, but we have a little one over here. Well, shop tour here. Yeah. So this little guy is called a Tag Micro Mill. It's uh, it's pretty awesome. It's accurate. It's not large by any means, but uh, it's good for prototyping and stuff like that. So we keep it at this location. This is kind of our printing shipping location. And then the machine shop is across town. And we're in Columbia, Missouri, by the way. All right, on. There's Boba Bot Dustin, who's in St. Louis area, I believe, in that area. So. I was going to say who? Yeah. He's, he's that, supposedly that a, a co-host still. I don't know. He kind of... <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. He's he's there. <laughs> so, he's a bad, bad yeah. Vibes. Yeah. Right. Uh, but what, what was it? Where was it? Oh, if you want to email me, the uh, Dustyer's mindset at gmail dot com. That's a good place to do that. The folks over at Rise Armament, I got all three of their triggers. Well, three out of the four triggers they make in stock. I got the flat trigger, which is a four thirty four. We got the Ferrari of triggers, the red one. Uh, this is 535 and the 140 trigger. So head over to Shooter's Mindset Shop if you want a new AR trigger. Um, what else we got here? So folks over at Snag Mag for your conceal. If you carry a spear magazine, they have a really good holster for that, for concealed carry. Check them out. It says snagmag.com. Terran Tactical Innovations, also N82 Tactical for inside the waistband concealed carry. All day comfort holsters. Excellent stuff. Uh, definitely thanks to Tyler and Ethan, man, for spending the time and talking to us on episode 191. We appreciate it. No problem. See you guys. And, yeah, that'll do it. I guess that'll do it for episode 191 of the Shooter's Mindset. Thank you guys for tuning in tonight. We're out of here. Good night, y'all. Bye.